This week on Awesome Cast, we got a full house, and we're mourning the death of Windows XP. Stick around. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh. Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast 193. I'm Sorgatron, Mike Sorg, uh, here in the studio in Pittsburgh, PA. We're going to have a fun one. We're going to have a little bit of a going away party later in the show, but we'll get to that in a little bit. First in the studio uh, is Dutters, at K Dutters on the Twitters. Hi, friends. Did your cat leave you? Yes. <laughs> My buddy Sammy left me. He never does that. <laughs> never does that. Back on the show. It's been a few weeks. Yeah, I missed you guys. Is that sad? <laughs> in which in which in which tone? <laughs> uh, I mean, I I I just care so much for you all. Uh, uh, also, <laughs> also back with us. I think yeah, this is his first time back. Uh, oh, can't see the shirt there. Let me see if I can do something about that. Uh, the I Dad Chilla <laughs> joins us. What's up? How's it going? <laughs> How is the kid? Very, very good. He's eating well, sleeping well. I can't ask for more. He's really only getting up probably about once a night, usually in the 3 to 4 a.m. time frame. I, I, I mean, we, we feed him before bed, feed him when he wakes up. He's not a vampire. I mean, oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> that, that you know of. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that I know of. Um, but yeah, everything's been going well. Uh, fortunately, work gives us uh, a week off. So I had last week off. To hang out around the house and then i'm back to work this week and back on the awesome cast nice nice and so much to talk about i know you'll probably follow up on a mm-hmm. lot of these that happened uh last week uh also back with us he's from the beaver county times mike pound uncle crappy your uncle crappy uh how you doing sir i'm doing well sir how are you excellent excellent good to see you again thank you very much wonderful beard you're growing there is that new uh that was a the wintertime thing i'm i'm gonna hang on to it probably through the end of the month and nice. then and we'll go return you to your regularly scheduled goatee and we, we never mentioned this enough but mike actually does uh pretty much the tech beat over there on beaver county times uh um, yes yes you can you can find a, a, a consumer tech column every, every sunday at timesonline.com um it's uh, a couple of things that we have on the list tonight are are things that i've written about recently so that's going to be fun excellent and also talk about beer too (laughs) awesome the beer guy the resident beer guy of uh of beaver county um so uh, we of course this is the awesome cast uh we're over at awesomecast.com uh you can uh see us here live we're on uh, sorgatronmedia.com live at sorgatronmedia.com at 6 30 p.m eastern time on tuesdays on twitter we're at awesomecast and you can also find us on facebook and google plus or drop us a line at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com with any stories you think we should be talking about or any of your opinions or comment on this video or podcast or however you're finding us um you're also available on itunes roku blip tv YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker, uh, not the iHeartRadio app. I'm working on that one. Uh, so I'm uh, coming for you, Mikey and Big Bob. Uh, <laughs> oh, yep, oh. yep. We already, I've already got Indie no. Mayhem show up there and the movie minutes, so, but not the uh, not the big two yet. So I, I think maybe Boss Battle. I have to double check on that. Uh, so uh, let's get started. Uh, we we uh, start off with the awesome thing of the week, and then we'll talk about the less awesome thing of the week later. Uh, so uh, who wants to go first? Nobody wants to go first. <laughs> oh, I go first. <laughs> so, I got, first. I got a real, oh, I got go a real ahead, quick one because it, people only have four hours to react to it. Okay. Um, and oddly enough, I didn't get an email notification until yesterday. But if you've ever used the Mac Heist bundles, mm-hmm. um, Mac Heist has a lot of uh, Mac software out there um, that they offer a, a good deal on. Um, this is the Design Award bundle. Um, so it's uh, $1,776 worth of applications for a mere $20. Mm-hmm. Um, 10% of that goes to the charity of your choice, or you can split it up uh, amongst a bunch of charities. Um, so you'll remember Boinks TV, that's on there, the full $500 Boinks TV software. 
Um, so I was definitely interested in that. Um, right now they've sold a little under 20,000 bundles. If they hit the 20,000 mark, screen flows unlocked, which is a nine, nine, uh, $99 uh, screen recording package. I'm interested in also the, I, I don't know how it's pronounced, Zojo, X-O-J-O -O desktop, which um, does some coding and Toon Boom Studio, which will actually do kind of tween-based animation. Um, picturesque is a pretty cool little quick photo app for doing uh, mm -hmm. perspective, reflection, shadow, corners, um, cropping. So, so they got they were all these companies are Apple Design Award winners. So you know their software must be pretty decent if, oh, yeah. if Apple's thinking. Um, and actually, the, uh, on it. you mentioned the boinks, and, and and I recommend anybody that's interested in video podcasting, you know, being able to do something akin to what we're doing here. Uh, it's much like this is actually what got us onto doing video versions of all these shows. Was I got a Mac heist, and Moinks was on there. Actually, a lot of these, like Fisher esque and a few of these, were in that very same package. Um, and that's what got us to, I paid 20, 30 bucks maybe. Um, and, and we started doing the videos out of that. Um, and uh, I don't, going to Wirecast, which is kind of like kind of fate and some of the features and stuff, but it's a great starting point for that. I think uh, the, the version you get, if this is the same way as before, is uh, they're not full, full priced one. So you gotta watch sometimes their last versions and stuff with this package um at least they have been in the past uh, but i know like the version of the points i had it was pretty much full featured but they added a made with points tv at the end but i edit things anyway so i'd always crop that off um so this this is marked as and i went out to boinks's site it's, it's the full edition mm -hmm. hmm. it's not it's not home edition so i i'm not sure i'm not 100 percent familiar but they only sell two versions boinks tv home and boinks tv okay this is the this is the full and even that, full that, edition of, that sounds a little without different the than... truck live video production suddenly becomes more affordable yeah um so i don't know i i'm guessing it mm -hmm. it doesn't have it but I, i'm not sure i'll let you know because i i purchased it this morning um I, oddly i usually see the emails pop up from them must have gotten lost in my gmail yeah, I've, been, I've been wanting to check but, um, i've actually been wanting to reload boinks and see you know just you know see see if, how they've updated and stuff and how it compares to wirecast today and what we're doing down here uh but again mm -hmm. it, it, there's a great nice cheap solution to get right in and try to do a little bit of at home stuff although of course half the stuff you do in hangout now anyways but <laughs> <laughs> if you want to go the extra distance you know it's it's a good place if you're really worried about the quality so awesome awesome uh you got another one there right I got another. Uh, that was I was trying to make that one quick because it is like I said they only have about four hours left on that sale. Um, the other thing is that it's called Three Play and it's a Bluetooth audio dongle. I know we all love dongles, um, but this actually allows you to connect up to three devices via Bluetooth four to pretty much any speaker set that takes the and you're you're more into cabling with audio than I am. The the basic microphone headphone jack type of cable. Obviously, you can split that out to um, to a stereo receiver or pretty much any speakers that'll take that. Um, one of the cool things they had on here was is they actually used it and plugged it in as the into the microphone jack on a on a um, on a camera that they were recording and actually used it to feed in additional soundtrack audio as they were recording video. Oh, nice! Um, it does allow three simultaneous connections. So if we all connected to it and started playing music, the last person that hits play then takes control of the dongle. Huh. So I can't remember what the, the, the one DJ app that we were playing around with at PodCamp two years ago. But um, you can kind of envision it like that, but obviously only three people connected. The, the other thing that I like about it is it's Bluetooth 4. So you're getting 10 hours of battery life because of the um, Bluetooth 4 low energy connection. Obviously, if, as long as your your phone's gonna your phone's gonna gain from it because it's gonna your phone's gonna be using Bluetooth 4 if you have it, and the device since it's Bluetooth 4 is gonna get um, it's 10 hours of battery life. Only 99 dollars. I love the headline here on Engadget. The uh... Uh, the audio dongle that begs to be misused. <laughs> that's pretty good there. Oh, that's that's cool. That's that's one I want. <laughs> that is one I want. That's awesome. Dutters, you had to raise your hand next. Hi. Hi. Uh, one quick 
fun thing, awesome thing of the week for me. Uh, the Simpsons are now on the Comcast TV Go app, which makes me very happy. Along, uh, Family Guy is also on there too. It's the new apps, but it's not or the new episodes, but it's not. Um, the older ones yet. That's not till the fall with FXX, FXX's um, app mm-hmm. where you can get access to all of them. But I was excited to see that last night on Comcast. Yeah, I know. I know Hulu's always been really weird about what mm-hmm. Simpsons you get to see and where. Mm-hmm. So I think there was a list of like six of the new ones that were on uh, the Comcast TV Go, but that was exciting for me. So I'm mm-hmm. a Simpsons fan. And then my other cool thing is uh, coupons.com, which is a huge coupon clip site, is now doing a um, thing with retailers where it's direct to the card. Um, essentially, uh, Old Navy, uh, Gap, Banana Republic, who else was on there? Travelocity, Denny's, Body Shop, and a few other retailers. <sighs> Denny's. Yeah, Denny's. <laughs> I'm yeah. in. Yeah, Denny's is uh, $5 off purchases of $10 or more. And you just add these directly to your card, your card of your choice. Mm-hmm. And when you check out, you swipe and it refunds the, essentially, it refunds the money back to your card. It's uh, settled up in a couple days. Is the way that works. Okay. So the retailer has, there's no change for what they have to do, which is really nice because there's not a whole retraining process. Um, it also, on their end, they also get a tracking with this information from coupons.com, a system to keep track of your purchases and when they were redeemed. Okay. Which is really cool too. So I have to use the card. Like, mm-hmm. so I, I just like link, like, is it one card? Can I put it on all my cards or? Um, I didn't, I didn't see that on the website. I, I, I noticed just the one card mm-hmm. that you could set up, but mm-hmm. I, I'm pretty sure you probably get away with uh, multiple cards. Now, and it can be debit cards. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cool. Because that's like, I've been like, like my bank now does a thing where, oh, we have offers and, and Denny's is one, you'll get so much cash back or mm-hmm. something. Um, and, and I've just been like adding in those and not thinking about it. And sometimes I'll go in and like, oh, you got a buck and a half back. It's like, you know, something like that. I, I like that. And especially you go through this, like every once in a while and be like, yeah, someplace I might go to in the next mm-hmm. month. Yeah. Someplace, uh, you make it a little more automated. Yeah. It's a card link IQ or click it has been their system. Mm-hmm. Uh, they bought it off of Yub. For thirty million dollars, why you be yub? Okay, and the, and the, so and they're also linked to uh, Grocery IQ, which I've been mm-hmm. kind of playing with. But it, you know, they're like, oh, you got coupons, but it just like I don't want to explain to the poor person at the grocery store to scan this thing, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, but if it just just links right in with the cart, that that might make me mm-hmm. uh, use Grocery IQ a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that they're stepping up a little a little bit because um, Target is really good for adding things to just your phone and they're used to scanning it Mm -hmm. so it's not a big deal but hopefully more retailers will jump on board with this i think it's a pretty cool system you don't have to worry about having a target app and all that Mm -hmm. kind of stuff yeah you just add it to your card before you leave the house no clipping coupon just here you go pay and then uh, reconciles it in a few days for you awesome Mm -hmm. awesome save money mike do you have an awesome thing of the week sir i i i in keeping with my tradition of um uh, offering kind of odd awesome things of the week and, and I, I was thinking of this as a public service because i drive by this twice a day every day traveling from pittsburgh where i live to beaver where i work um on on route 65 on high river boulevard and there's this thing as you get to the uh, to the main intersection swiftly um the uh, sweet water center for the arts is right there at the intersection you can't miss the building big uh, stone uh, gothic thing um and there are giant green tentacles sticking out of the top <laughs> of the building there's an image there if you're on the video version yeah there's definitely big <laughs> tentacles going on there that's awesome the, the deal with this uh, the deal with this is um this is a promotional thing that they're doing and apparently those things are going to be up there all summer um the, but they, they they want people to be aware of of the uh the, the crazy fun stuff you can do at the sweetwater center for the arts which is uh, perhaps a little bit contradictory with the nature of swickley However, um, I, it is a very cool thing, and it's also kind of surprising. I, I nearly drive off the road uh, on the way to work every morning and every evening because I forget they're there. I'm like, golly, good green tentacles. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I mean, that, that's, I, 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 was, uh, I noticed that I was surprised again when I was coming home from work this afternoon. And it's like, okay, yeah, that, that is totally my, my awesome thing of the week. So if you get a chance to drive up that way, um, go and take a look. I, I know that the uh, folks at the Air Center would appreciate it. And they are they are genuinely odd. Um, so we're, we're the drive up. Awesome, awesome. Uh, my awesome thing is I actually heard about this on uh, MacBreak earlier today, uh, and it's a it's a game because it's the reason that I was a little late getting started with the podcasting today because I kind of lost track of time a little bit. Um, but it's a game called uh, Monument Valley. Va- excuse me, Monument Valley on the uh, on the iPhone. It's apparently coming soon to uh, Android as well. 
Uh, it is a $4 game, uh, but apparently there's no upsells or anything. So, uh, you know, you're not going to be like, you know, candy crushed and, you know, need more coins to do some crap in it or anything. Um, it's a really cool little um, puzzle game. Uh, we got the video running here. And as you go through, it, it's what are those paintings where it's like the, the steps that go everywhere? Uh, Escher? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like, yes. like the entire, all the levels are like that. And you're, you're oh, moving God. parts of the level. And if it looks like it connects, it connects. Like I got about four levels in on this and now it's like turning, um, like it's turning your orientation sideways. Uh, so now I'm walking on the sides to the point where I was like, well, I guess I need to turn my phone so I can figure out which way I can actually go. Um, if, if you've played any video games, I know Chachi's familiar with this, uh, uh games like, it has that feeling like Fez on that, that's been an indie game on Xbox and PC and everything uh, for a while now. So it's got that very eerie uh, aura to it. Um, but it, it's I, I just again lost time into this thing. Um, they said three ninety nine on the iOS App Store coming soon on um, on Android. Uh, it, they said it's kind of short, but again, it's like yo know, no extra stuff. You pretty much get what you get, um, and it's pretty pretty nice change of pace and looks looks amazing looks amazing um so uh and also these like little birds here uh you, you they'll actually like squawk at you when you when you tap on them <laughs> so uh, uh you can check that out. Uh, monumentvalleygame.com has a video and other information if you want to check that out um and just monument valley on your uh ios device so a lot of fun so awesome uh, with that, hey, you know, when check in, so we need to fuel the show with pizza and, uh, <laughs> uh, you just got here. Oh yeah. You haven't got any yet. Go and get yourself some, um, slice on Broadway. Uh, if you're in the Pittsburgh area, uh, especially here in the South Hills, uh, they've been, uh, uh really good about supporting <laughs> us here as Tutter says. <laughs> We like to try to get people in here as much as possible in the studio because we love we like that we can connect all you guys on Skype and everything. Not uh, Skype. We don't even use Skype anymore. <laughs> Google Hang. I have a Skype story coming up. I'm sorry. Um, but uh, we went to them and said, hey, can you help us beat our guys to come in here? And uh, we'll tell people about you. Uh, and, and hopefully we find out in a week uh, the results of the WPXI Best Pizza Contest. So I didn't get your <laughs> thumbs up. better have won because I installed Flash just to vote. Good. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We have sacrificed to make sure this happens. Uh, but uh, they're, they're great. They're right up here on the tracks here in Beachview. Uh, I think they have another location coming soon in Carnegie, so watch out for that uh, here in the summer, I believe. Uh, and uh, if, if you're down here, check it out. they got great specialty pizzas and everything. So uh, They have beer. And they have beer. They do have they beer. Do? Good beer. Really? Mm-hmm. Yep. This is a new thing. Mm -hmm. Beers uh, and bottles they, and cans. They, they, there's another place. You know, we should ask them if they're, they have interest uh there's a, there's the the was it the corner bar has now become like a kind of like a trendy elite micro brew house on in Mount Lebanon. Oh really? So, uh, yeah, uh, Hitchhiker. They, that... they redid their whole thing. I'm interested in stopping by there sometime to to check it out. Is that is that the one that's going to be Hitchhiker? Do you know? I don't know. I know it's. Okay. I think it's called cor the Corner Bar. I thought hmm. they were keeping the name because they just redid the outside facade. Hmm, okay. So you know, you know who would probably know is Darda. Okay, uh, well, sure. Doug, get in the chat. <laughs> Doug, where are you at? Hopefully, you know you're watching on the Chromecast. Here, jump in. <laughs> but you can check them out there's, over. There's, at... there's a new one coming in in Mount Lebanon called Hitchhiker. Uh, a good friend of mine, uh, who is who is an excellent home brewer, has just been hired as the uh, the brewmaster there. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. But we can we can find the other one too. That's that that'll be just fine. Um, and you can go check them out. They're on sliceonbroadway.com, so you can find out all that information. We frequent them awesome. Uh, uh, we, we frequent them uh, 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 often uh, with the pizza pals and everything. So uh, with that, I a good a good thing. Uh, let's 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 bring the tone of the show down a little bit because it is it is Windows Death Day, guys. <laughs> Not all of Windows. Some of the balloons will make it in the shot. Some of the balloons will make it in the shot. There we go. It's windows. Okay, I don't think we saw most of them, but um, yeah, we got balloons. 
<laughs> it's Windows Death Day. I figure we we're going to ce celebrate the life and times, the uh, the years. Oh my God, these balloons are everywhere. <laughs> we'll, we'll work on <laughs> memories. We we'll work on it. the memories of Windows XP. Uh, of course, I, the big thing is the security concerns because I have it on a few machines here. Mm -hmm. I think most of our banks have ATMs that run them. Um, and I'm wondering how that goes. I got a HIPAA compliance uh, thing in the mail from my one client uh, to make sure I don't have them. Oh, that is a sad one. That one was just, that, was, that balloon was just too sad for Windows Death Day. That's not good at all. That's, that's not okay. Um, for those of you listening at home. Oh, man. It is a little green shriveled balloon. It, I got to find my mouse so I can switch shots. I guess, I'm just going to be stuck on me for a bit. Um, uh, so, 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 uh, I mean, what I want do? Do any of you have anything running at Windows XP? I actually had a, a, a virtual machine run an XP um, for some work stuff, and I actually uh, just recently switched it over to Windows Seven. So I think that's that was the last of the XP devices. I bet you I might have like a laptop sitting around somewhere that I can throw something else on. Um, I preferred XP on all my machines personally, mm -hmm. but I've been recently trying to upgrade anything that I had that was Windows based. I've been trying to, to, to upgrade to to at least seven, if not eight. Hey, for me, I, I've been kind of avoid. I've, I I almost completely avoided Vista, of course, uh, and I'm just now uh, kind of getting some Windows seven on some machines. Uh, but moving to Mac, that was kind of you know, obvious. Uh, so, so how how did this last so long? <laughs> oh, well, here you know what? Um, the de all the delivery machines and monitors and all that equipment in the hospital, all mm -hmm. Windows XP. Oh yeah, completely, mm -hmm. completely. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think um, sheets because I, I at some point fairly recently I was absorbing something at New Sheets in Rochester, and uh, the the the, the touchscreen just reset itself. Yeah, and suddenly, and suddenly, there's the, the the picture that you know with the field and the music and and, and that stuff. Um, it's like, oh, okay, Windows XP. Also, I need to order my lunch because I don't have that much time. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I don't have any XP stuff personally. Um, I my my laptop runs eight, which I actually kind of like. Um, I, I know of a, a, a newspaper in Beaver County that has you know probably a hundred or so machines uh, Windows uh, XP. Running and our, our IT guy is is not concerned about this. He seems to be prepared for a a, a gradual, uh, easy transition, probably to, to Windows Seven is what I would imagine. But and I imagine but like right now, everyone in the, everyone in my newsroom sort of it's it, you know they saw they got emails today or or saw uh, wire stories and they're like. We run Windows XP in here. Don't we? Oh my God! <laughs> and even more so, uh, there. And I got it when I booted up the computers here today. Uh, you're going to start getting a dialog box periodically mm -hmm. saying, "Hey, uh, we don't support this anymore. You might want to upgrade." I I, mm -hmm. uh, I took a picture of it earlier, actually. Um, uh, thank you. There's my phone. Um, <laughs> lost in all these balloons. Um, but uh, so so I mean, people are going to remind it, and I wonder. Well, I guess it could be disabled on most of them if they rolled it out. Still work on these balloons, um, but uh, uh, wow! Because I, I remember, so, so large companies, large companies do have the option of paying for extended, extended, extended support. Okay, um, mm -hmm. that ex that that support is 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 not cheap at all. I want to say it starts, and Krauss probably might know the the, the true dollar value to this. I want to say it starts at a million dollars. Oh, jeez. Um, and then for every vulnerability that that would affect your company, it's an additional fifty thousand per patch. I can I can um, tell you um, with uh, complete certainty that my company is not paying for that. Yeah. <laughs> so and, and no. I think I think what we'll see is in, I think if. If we make it out of the next thirty days um, with without any major attacks, I, I think that'll. I don't think I think you're going to see people rush to attack. They're not going to give it. Ah, eh, we'll give them four months and then and then try to try to go after the machine. So I, it'll it'll be an interesting thing to see see what what happens because a lot of times what what normally happens is um, the white hat hackers 
um, find a vulnerability, alert the company, the company then creates patch. Nobody tells anybody that the vulnerability is there until after the patch comes out. Now you're going to have all, and what they're seeing is more than likely, or 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 there's a vulnerability out in the wild that someone's exploiting, and then they patch and then fix. What they're seeing is as people have been saving up vulnerabilities that they knew about, and then they're they're all going to go crazy over the next couple of weeks. So only time will tell. And this this kind of same thing happens to to Apple. That's how the jailbreaks work. Mm -hmm. um, Usually when they're trying to figure out an exploit to jailbreak a device, they'll find a couple. They only use one of them. And then when Apple patches that, then they use another one. It's kind of that cat and mouse game. The issue here is is that Microsoft is not providing patches any longer. And then I've heard, I think, Chrome. Chrome will continue to patch their browser. So if it's a, if it's a vulnerability that's related to browser they'll patch their browser for xp um i can't remember there was a couple companies that are going to continue to support even though microsoft's not supporting xp these other companies will will still support xp which is kind of interesting i, I want to say that a vast virus was going to continue to support xp so uh, only time will tell yeah and, and, and and a lot of these, like your Sheets computers and everything, I mean, they're they're not going to, I think, succumb a lot of attacks. Um, those guys are pretty much like in-house. Uh, a lot of other embedded stuff that maybe isn't network connected, I don't think they're going to worry about. They're going to ride those things into the ground at this point. Um, I think the closest... I want to say the, the, the UK government actually yeah. admitted that they're going to have to pay the, the Microsoft tax. Oh, wow. It was 5.5, was it euros or pounds? Um, it was, was 5.5 something. But it's it's millions of yeah, which their their exchange rate is like mm -hmm. every one of theirs is like one one pound is like fifty cents I think or something mm -hmm. like that so solid amount or seventy five cents something like that so and, and it's not like uh, nobody saw this coming you know at this point uh, mm -hmm. it, it's it's I, I guess like you said it's companies that aren't worried about it like I don't know how much of a security concern there is with uh, what's on your computers at the at the newspaper for instance right. Mm -hmm. Well, there's actually oh. a bigger issue that happened today out on the internets. Uh, yeah. Um, I, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> um, the heart bleed security bug that affects 66 percent. They're claiming 66 percent of the internet. Um, there's a actual issue with Open SSL, and the vulnerability pretty much allows anyone to exploit it remotely. And you can read everything in memory on the remote system. Um, I think this was announced last night, um, and people have been trying to patch servers all day. I read somewhere that Google and Microsoft both claim, uh, both laid laid out that they do not use OpenSSL. Um, Yahoo was vulnerable, and someone did a scan this morning and grabbed. Everybody who was currently logged into Yahoo, um, they grabbed their user IDs, passwords, pretty much everything that they would want wow. from, yeah, from, from Yahoo's users. So uh, I know that there's been talk all over the internet all day of, of everybody trying to figure out all they, are they vulnerable um, and, and whatnot. I, there's a, if you go to heartbleed.com, there's a background on, on the bug. Um, and there's also, I want to say, uh, maybe there isn't. I put a, I put a, I put a link in the show notes that you can use to figure out if a site is vulnerable. Mm -hmm. um, I, know, I would, I would stay away from anything that you have to sign into with the user ID and password. Um, I actually checked that coupons.com. The, the, for some weird reason, the, the tool that I have out there is, is throwing an error, but. Um, yeah, I, I would. I wouldn't be logging into sites if if you're if you have private information or mm -hmm. anything like that. They were even saying some. I don't think LastPass was affected, mm -hmm. but some sites that that are used for for password logging while the data is encrypted, um, if they have your user ID and password, that's not gonna. That's, the data is going to be encryption back in their data center, but 
you're they're going to have the keys to go unlock that mm -hmm. encryption so and, and i caught a little bit i caught a little bit of the explanation <laughs> uh here today uh amongst the stuff that i listened to um and and it sounds like it's it's more complicated than usual. Usually, like they issue a patch, everything's fixed, everybody's good. Like I think they have to issue a patch, and they have to do something else. Uh, so not to get too big into it. Um, so un un unfortunately, and they're saying you you shouldn't if, if it's something important like your I think banks they said are, are going to be shouldn't be affected by this or should be fixing this right away. But if it's something like a last pass that uh, you're yeah, you know, with your log information is very important. Um, you should wait until you get an email from that institution that they've updated or says that mm -hmm. they weren't affected or something to that effect before you go to that institution. Now, I'm sitting there. So is Google affected by this? No. No. Because I'm thinking Google, like Google, Google everything... and Microsoft both came forward right away okay. and said that they do not use OpenSSL. Okay. Um, so they're, they're part of the 33%. So I'm moving. I'm moving balloons so I can see the chat room. Um, <laughs> and now I'm concerned because I logged into my credit union um, account earlier. So if, you, so if you click that, if you click that link that's in the show notes, it's the uh, what is it, Flipio or something like that. Um, and you type in the URL, whatever your bank is, it'll try to make a connection and it'll quickly figure out if the if they're vulnerable. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, uh, flippio.io slash heartbleed. Excuse me. Uh, I guess if you, you do, if you search for heartbleed test, this is probably going to come up too. So if you go mm -hmm. in and I say like ah, pnc.com is my bank, for instance, um, and I'll do a test and uh oh, something went wrong. Yeah, I'm getting a broken, something broken as yeah, well. Yeah, I was getting a broken link earlier too. So I don't know if people were trying, if even if they couldn't get the SSL fixed, mm -hmm. they were trying to put something, they're saying that there's actually no way, with the way the OpenSSL vulnerability is, there's no way to actually prevent it. Mm -hmm. And there's actually also no logging for it. Um, the one thing that I don't know is, hold on one second. Do, 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 do. Um, yeah, it is www.pnc.com. I didn't know if it was like virtualwallet.com or mm -hmm. something. Now, I do get like so, yeah, I, I, I checked in sure. Google.com. It says all good. Google seems to be not affected. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, it, it so it's a pretty straightforward tool. So check out anything that you you use on a regular basis um, uh, throughout the day, and uh, it, I guess basically just not log into anything else that you're curious about until. I don't know why you're getting all clear. Like, when's the what's the end of this? Yeah, that's. I mean, the, the, I mean, it's up to your whatever you're trying to log into to let you know. Yeah. If it worked, but otherwise, I would use some kind of tool before before you log in. Some people, I mean, <clears throat> um, if you remember the target hack that happened around the holidays, they at least were able to log and figure out who was affected, and then notify customers and notify people that this isn't logged. So. I don't know how people are even going to be notified. Mm-hmm. Um, we're checking. Oh, good. <laughs> we're checking things. We're, we're, all check, we're all checking things right now. Like, good, Squarespace isn't affected. Oh, my God. <laughs> Some client stuff on there. Um, awesome. Uh, well, less than awesome. Let's turn it back around. So a lot of stuff got announced last week. Uh, we have TV boxes. We got phone news. We got all kinds of stuff. Uh, uh, Chilla, were you following Build at all? I did follow Build. I don't think I put a link in the... I got the Windows Phone stuff in here. You got the Windows Phone stuff. So some of the big stuff, and I'm going to give a rundown, and then we can bounce back and figure out uh, if there's some specific topics. So you got the Windows 8.1 update. Um, obviously, they're fixing stuff for, for people leveraging a mouse versus leverage a touchscreen. Um, you can boot to desktop. Oh. Um, they're talking. They talked about the return of the start menu and future updates. We have Cortana um, coming to the Windows Phone world, which I think you have a link in there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like the name. It'll be interesting to see um, how that works versus Siri or Google Now. Um, interestingly enough, they did get the person that does the voice for Cortana nice. um, to do to do a lot of the pre-recorded stuff. So if you ask certain questions like "Who's your daddy?", mm -hmm. it's the person who plays Cortana's voice in the Halo games and the Halo series. 
I'm saying that it's Bill Gates, I think, is the, is the answer to that. Um, some of the stuff that has to be kind of strung together that they don't have voice recordings for will be a synthesized voice based on her voice. Um, but the, it, it'll get better over time, they're saying. Um, Windows Phone's also getting 8.1. Uh, additional Lumia phones um, coming out. And the Windows 8.1 8 update, I know they're, they're getting things like the Cortana. They're getting a notification center. Um, trying to go through here real quick. Um, Windows Everywhere, um, phones and tablets with screens less than nine inches, there's no longer a licensing fee Ooh. from Microsoft to the OEM. So I'm sure you're going to be seeing a huge um, number of phones and, and manufacturers like HTC, Samsung, etc., putting out phones because there is no licensing fee on that as well as things like your Dell tablets. If you're, if you're, if you're under... Um, nine inches, Microsoft's not, not charging you. Um, uh, they, they did give a preview of Office for tablets, which they had, they had a few days prior shown off Office for the iPad. Um, one of the other things that the geek in me really is impressed with is that they're moving to a more common API. Um, so they're getting closer to the capability of um, write once compile cross platform. And one of the things they did talk about too is you could write an iPhone, or an iPhone. you could write a um, Windows phone app and then actually also compile that same exact app for the Xbox. So one of the things that came out right after that announcement, if, if you're a Plex fan for, for streaming media all over the place, Plex announced immediately that they will be um, releasing a Xbox One application. Um, the one thing to note on Xbox One is that it goes through, from what I heard, an extra layer of approval. So not just your typical code review. I think that they they're censoring a little more of the of the of the content coming to the Xbox. Mm -hmm. But I I mean, all in all, I mean, it was a strong, strong performance coming out of build for Microsoft. Um, They've caught up and I think in some cases exceeded what some of the things that that Apple or Google, Apple and or Google are doing. Um, I think the interesting thing to, to also pay attention to is they they hold the first developer conference of the year. Um, we'll then move on to um, Apple's developer conference and then Google's developer conference. So we'll, it'll be interesting to see see how, how those companies answer back. Interesting. Because a lot of these things, a lot of these things too, like you think about Notification Center yeah. and Cortana, um, they're more of a catch-up. So, so it's one I'm, I'm guessing you're going to hear Google do something with Chrome OS and cross-compiling for the Chrome browser. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, it definitely seems like it's one less reason. And also, like one good conversation coming out of this is is the idea that. Uh, as opposed to Apple, Microsoft has more chances to do the Google Now kind of thing because they do have Bing and they do have a lot of things that you have on Microsoft that count in, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so it can pick up on a lot of stuff you've been doing on your now your you know Windows computer and and or tablet or whatever and bring that over to the phone and do the a hey, here this here's your appointments you know and all that kind of stuff. Um, the, the cool thing I thought too when when you're talking about that is that it keeps it localized. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see, like on a, because on, they're gonna they're gonna bring that to Windows and Xbox and a, and a bunch of other places too, um, where your your data isn't going back to Google's, or like Google's data goes back to their servers to then kind of loop back and figure out what's going on, and then obviously they track that to to do better over time. Mm -hmm. um, in the Microsoft world, they're they're running that fine line between Apple and and Google of of being keeping your data your data and not necessarily going in there and, and filling around with it. The device is actually doing the transactions to figure out what to do. I mean, even I mean, Apple is very clear about how they, there's no way to track a Siri request, but that, that Siri request does have to go back to an Apple server to then figure out what, what you're asking or what you're talking about and then come back to the device. So it's not as creepy. <laughs> uh, I'm still not going to update my Wirecast machine. <laughs> <laughs> 
for for when, it, I was looking at Windows 8.1. Sorry on the side there. And uh, oh my god, these things are everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's now stuck to me. The interesting thing too, I thought about uh, the Office for Windows tablets looked looked similar to Office for the iPad. Mm -hmm. um, I think it obviously has a little more capability, um, and I, that doesn't surprise yeah, me. They really... The one thing I was really surprised with their with their iPad um, release was they're paying the Apple tax. Mm -hmm. If you so the apps are free to download. You can use it to view Microsoft documents. You can edit. Um, you can actually present PowerPoints um, through the viewer with a like, kind of like a laser pointer and, and, and screen mirroring things of that nature. Um, but if you sign up for um, Office 365 um, via the app, which is ninety nine dollars a year for the typical standard, um, and then I think it's seventy dollars for the single license. Um, they're 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 giving thirty percent of that over to Apple, so everyone's kind of actually winning out. I think they had twenty twelve million, tw yeah, twelve million downloads in, in I think the first day or two. Oh wow! Um, they did not say how many of those because obviously the apps are free. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, they did not say how many. Um, in-app purchases were made, and I but feel, some, someone did tell me that they would actually beat out Candy Crush for a while. I don't know if they still are. <laughs> and I feel like most people, I, I think they just went ahead and did that because they figure most people are already subscribed and just bringing that access over. Mm -hmm. So, um, awesome, awesome. And the other big story last week, Amazon had a lot going on with Fire TV. Um, and followed up by Android TV actually this weekend apparently leaked out, um, which I guess looks a lot like Fire TV. So, so I mean, it's it's, it's basically what you expect. It's a uh, it's a uh, and actually it's it you probably haven't missed it if you go to Amazon's front page any time uh, <laughs> since last week's uh, announcement. Um, like but starting during the announcement actually. Really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's just this little box. It's got a control. There's a, a the cool. I guess the cool feature of it is it's got a microphone actually on that controller uh, that you speak into, the, and apparently it comes with a Gary Busey. I don't know. Um, but no, the, the, the cool thing is Gary Busey, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, but other than that, I mean, obviously you're, you're, it's Amazon first, and it does have, it looks like it has about everything you would need. No HBO, no WWE Network. You know, but it does have Hulu. It has Netflix. It has uh, show, Showtime Anytime. Is that a thing now? Is that like an HBO Go? Yeah, that's Showtime's. That's Showtime's version of HBO Go. Man, about time. Uh, I, I use it. I use it on my. I've used it on my iPad. I've used it in multiple places. It's not mm -hmm. like an, a, a Fire TV exclusive. Yeah. Uh, but but the cool thing uh, on top of this is they're making a play for games. This is a ninety nine dollar box, so it's not all that cheap. I, I read this wrong. I thought it was like. 40 bucks with a controller and i'm like oh my god <laughs> but apparently uh, uh they they you know we've been hearing about this we've been seeing controllers leak for a while uh but bringing up that thing but they actually are developing some games in-house exclusively exclusively for this this is an android device um so it's going to be like an OUI in the in the sense that it's Android games that are converted to use a controller, uh, you know that kind of thing. But some of the stuff looks really good. But then again, like look at like the game that I was you know showing off earlier for uh, an Android device. Um, it feels like they're kind of really making a play for this. Yeah, I think I'd, correct me if I'm wrong because I I didn't get to read a hundred percent of all of the the, the information. But I, I don't think it's available outside of the United States. Probably yet. not. No. Um, I, I think that's right. And I think that's right. The, the one interesting thing I did see today is that uh, Amazon made a claim that they actually have more content streamers, not content streaming. So there's more people streaming content off of um, Amazon's um, instant than Netflix or Hulu. So they, they seem to say that they're they're claiming they have more people streaming content. All they they stream more content than any of the other. And that two could major that could include Prime. That could include purchases. I mean, that could be that could be a little bit right. of everything. Mm -hmm. So I could see I, that. I, I saw that too, and I was I was curious. I mean, the the, the thing 
um, it, it's pretty pretty widely certain, uh, cited uh, thing that uh, during peak hours, which is we're mostly talking about evenings, that Netflix eats up more bandwidth domestically than anybody else. I, and I, I was curious about how what exactly Amazon was measuring when when they when they made that claim. Yeah, um, I, I was wondering that too because you don't hear about them fighting with companies like Comcast to make sure no, that their no, that their don't. stream is is solid. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. I, I would be surprised to hear how they calculated that. Uh, although they they probably also um, they're, just, they're probably just also quieter. They don't have a CEO that's like taking uh, Comcast the task publicly a lot uh, <laughs> as far as that goes. Uh, and and you know it's not like I don't think Jeff Bezos is directly involved in this. You know I mean versus you know Netflix. Yeah, they kind of got their arms like reaching everywhere in comparison. Well, I mean, look at HBO to go. I mean. It- the Game of Thrones premiere actually crashed all of the HBO to go servers. Mm-hmm. HBO now feels bad, and the HBO to go, uh, I think Game of Thrones is now free for like the next week or two mm-hmm. on Xbox. Mm-hmm. So uh, they on also, 360, they don't have a live, app, or they, they don't have a one app yet. I know they, they had put the premiere up on. Um, oh, so that that's why they were on Xbox. I know they put the premiere of Silicon Valley on uh, YouTube, but that that probably wasn't. Mm-hmm entirely connected like that they, they often put the like i've seen showtime put first episodes of seasons or series on um um on youtubes or, or something before too or on their app and they're just little teasers i think at that point um but uh, yeah and on the game side so so yeah the this is where it gets a little funky because you get you buy the hundred dollar thing you could play the games with that little remote which looks like a, a just a little bigger than an Apple TV remote, uh, but you can also pay another forty dollars and actually get a gamepad. Uh, so I don't know entirely who that's for, um, and, and it's not like it's going to compete really with an Xbox or anything like that. But really, when you look at this for something that's like a casual gamer kind of thing, uh, and it's connected to something people know like Amazon. And maybe this Android TV, which apparently looks a lot like this uh, in form and function that we'll probably hear about very, very soon. Uh, and you add on the games on that, I feel like that just kills the Nintendo Wii. Oh, that, that, that could be. And, and sorry, I, it, that's intended for someone like me who does not have uh, a, a game, any kind of gaming system at home. Um, mm-hmm. I, you know, whatever I play, I, it's what I'm, it was limited to what's on my phone. Um, and, and that was what I, I read about this last week because uh, Amazon was nice enough to, to have this announcement before my, my deadline for the column. Um, that, that was one of the, the really intriguing things about this for me um, because it sort of opens up this, this potential, uh, you know, I, 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 have, I, I have a Roku box at home. But, you know, if you add this um, – and suddenly there's this potential to open up this whole other world that, that I haven't really played with much. Um, and, I, and I know I'm not the only person uh, that, you know, sort of in this position. Um, a, a $99 box isn't that out of line. Uh, I, I think that's what Apple TV is. I think, you know, mm-hmm. the, the, the Roku box might be a little bit less expensive, but it's the same ballpark. Um, but not that much additional money. Uh, to buy a controller and sort of open up this whole other world. Um, that that so that was that was one of the things that was really intriguing about this announcement for me. Mm-hmm. And, and even but, look, look at the trailer; like these games look like good games. You know, they're yeah, not yeah. Halo, they're not Titanfall. But I think for the uninitiated like you, uh, like I think they just showed Asphalt Eight. I'm playing that on my phone, and I'm just like amazed by what these graphics look like on these devices. Uh-huh. And this is a very capable box. This is a quad core, you know, processor device. Mm-hmm. Um, that it's going to, you know, that, that they're going to get it, get this on. Uh, man, they, they could kill it as far as that goes. And then and then you're going to get this point, not just Fire TV, you're going to have your Android TV. You're going to have, Roku already has a little bit of, 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 of gaming on it, you know. Mm-hmm. We're seeing the, the, the start of some stuff on Chromecast even. Uh, you know, lower end, not anything like this, more party games with the Cards Against Humanity stuff. But this, this could eat, this this like eats out the bottom of uh, the game industry from Xbox, well, yeah. and and I look at it as too. I mean, you think of you think of parents trying to, to figure out what to buy their kids. I mean, you, you start off with a with a Kindle Fire. They start mm-hmm. off at one hundred and thirty nine bucks for the mm-hmm. Fire HD, all the way up to three seventy nine for the the Fire HD X eight point nine. Um, 
you think about it, okay, so you go with the baseline HD, you're at, you're at 140, you, you pick up the Fire TV, you're now at uh, what, one, 240, throw in a controller, you're at 280. You now have your kids reading, looking at media, they have a, a, a tablet that's running Android and a subset of the Android market. And you have this media console you have at home. I mean, when you compare that to something like a Wii or an Xbox One or a PlayStation Four, uh, coming in at, uh, at four to five hundred dollars. I mean, uh, to me, it's a no-brainer. Not to mention your games are probably what four four dollars and ninety-nine cents yeah. versus mm -hmm. a, yeah. sixty bucks. Uh, John, I think, John, this, that's, is, that, I think that's, this is. That's I think parents point. are going to go that's crazy exactly over what, this. Um, I, I'm, 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 I talk about when this is. Um, it, it, it is good for me. It, it is good for the families that you talk about. Um, there are an awful lot of people whose only kind of entries into into this uh, into the mobile world is is through uh, their Kindle Fire, and this is a, mm -hmm. so they're, they're going to be familiar with this stuff to begin with. Um, and and I as, I as I said in the column I wrote last week, I mean, the Amazon's going to sell these by the boatload. Uh, and, um, and on top of that, you talk about the parent side of things. They're also providing a service with us called Amazon Free Time, which is like a three dollar a month service where it's just stuff that's good for kids. Holy crap! Oh, it's God. like it's like <laughs> their own uh, just for kids for Netflix. They yeah. just freaking owned it. There's like here, this is your box. I don't have to worry about what you watch on there. You're not getting commercials, so I'm not. You're not going to be bugging me to buy the crap in the toilet aisle at Walmart. Um, and I know you won't click off. You know, like if you have the fire and you're on YouTube, uh, you know, you could go anywhere on YouTube. That's a scary proposition, you know. Mm -hmm. I have, yeah. I've seen some friends yeah. with their kids, and they're like, "Oh yeah, you just watches this stuff on YouTube." I'm like, "What if he clicks something else?" Dora Snuff Films is all you need. Dora to know. Snuff Films. That's all you need to know about the dangers of YouTube. How to How to Train the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Mm -hmm. I think it's like an At Midnight episode. Mm -hmm. um, but <laughs> yeah, there. You know, people complain about like the the um, you know having these ecosystems with like you know the iPhone and everything, um, but. Amazon created their own ecosystem over here. So now I think it's at a point where a lot of people, they're buying everything on Amazon. They're buying all their media on Amazon. They have their, they already have their Kindle, Kindles and Kindles fires. And they're just like, oh, it's a safe place. And you know, that's it. That's, that, that's it. This is the, the, to, to a lot of people, this Amazon and, and that entire bit of architecture is what they're familiar with. Um, and, and from what it sounds like, uh, the Fire TV box is going to be just, just an extension of that. Mm -hmm. and, and if you're familiar with something and, and you're comfortable and you know it's safe, especially if you've got kids in the house watching the TV, um, that's that's where you're going to look. And I, it's if you look at it, um, both my mom and Ginger's mom both have a, a Kindle Fire. So this is what they're comfortable with and this is what they're all and their friends have and they're using. So we're all comfortable using this system. And the other thing is, is now we're all family friendly and looking for parents because Chilla has a baby. This is what's good for parents. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and I, I look at it as, I mean, we're going to we'll continue to follow the hand-me-down, so he'll be yeah. getting third gen or whatever current gen is minus three or minus two, but <laughs> <laughs> it just saves money. That's the way I look at it. I, I just love it. It's awesome. On the devices, but, and I'm comfortable with what we have, but maybe by then, maybe everything will, will move to the Kindle. The only thing that I think could, could trouble them is, is, the overseas, they're not going to get the, the penetration in all those other markets. Um, I don't think they're worried about it. I mean, isn't isn't a lot of Amazon really U.S. based, anyways? I mean, how how widespread are they? I, 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 well, so they're publicly traded. Yeah, so they have to worry about their investors. Yeah, and when it but comes we, to the bottom line, it's all about it's all about increase. Yeah, and we know well. We know Bezos already told the 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 the. You know them that hey, if you want somebody that's going to be constantly increasing, go buy somebody else. Right. So and it's interesting too because I think a lot of the tech companies have been firing back with it with those kinds of comments. So yeah. Today and today also on that on that same note, Comcast and Time Warner filing with the FCC says Apple exploring new set top box. And they go into Google Fiber's marketing. And all in areas where Comcast or Time Warner already exist, Apple tablets are changing the way cable services are utilized. They talk about Apple TV, and then they 
that says that Apple is also exploring development of a set-top box. Microsoft just announced it will feature ads on the Xbox One, creating a whole new video advertising platform. And then Amazon announced its own set-top box while it continues to leverage unequaled sales platform and family of competitive tablets to promote its prime instant video business. So Comcast and Time Warner are trying to say there will still be competition in the market. Mm -hmm. But I just thought it was interesting that they just started throwing out everything that everyone's doing mm -hmm. and, and claiming that apple's making a, a set top box another one <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, this makes one. it sound like they're making it more of like a tivo type device mm -hmm. and i think that's what they need to do because the, the complaint about something like this amazon box for people that look at this stuff like me i'm like uh, i have how many things going on that i can watch a netflix on i can watch most of my stuff on uh you know people like us don't need another box but this is mm -hmm. like reaching out to the amazon people that aren't don't already have this or maybe they don't like the thing that their 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 smart tv does or something like that um this is a very growing market right now and, and if you look at like how many people are watching stuff through iptv like this versus uh broadcast there's a lot of room for growth and they're going but to also, i mean how many people live in an area where they can't get cable or or high-speed internet and you mm -hmm. kind of run into that caveat of okay these people are using your dish networks and your direct tvs mm -hmm. what what do you do for that yeah i can't I, I would love to send my dad a roku and be like here have fun or a chromecast and here have fun but he has HughesNet. Mm. In order to, he has, he has the satellite <laughs> dish which i'm pretty sure has like uh something like a 200 megabyte data cap every day that that Ooh. the last i looked at it i haven't i actually haven't been up there since he's installed it so i don't know what the you know what, what it's like uh so but i i understand it's got a little bit better uh but even those have to increase well, i guess they don't if they if their competition is is dial up at that point um but yeah there, and there's definitely going to be this this backwater technology area that is just is going to be completely excluded from this and they're they're sitting there watching their broadcast tv in the middle of you know appalachia and hearing about uh, all these ways you can now watch uh, the latest uh, Captain America movie on on all these things, and they're just like, well, when can I get it on v on DVD for my local grocery store that happens to rent DVDs, which is the only place in 20 miles that does so. You know, um, it, it's going to be interesting. Uh, but and then of course Android TV as well. Hey, a story I didn't put in the rundown. But this is actually interesting, and, and we've been kind of following this. WWE Network, which is kind of the biggest over-the-top kind of content play we've, set, we've seen, uh, had their big WrestleMania over the weekend. Some of us are aware of that. Um, and, and I know a lot of people uh, going up to this, like we, we had seen a lot of the live events kind of skip, and there's been a lot of technical problems. Apparently, WrestleMania 30, the biggest thing anybody would be watching, just fine. It doesn't sound like anybody had any uh, big issues with it. And uh, they clocked in with the report the next day saying they did upwards of uh, between six and 700,000 subscribers uh, just over their first month. Uh, I guess about a month and a half, I guess six weeks, right? That's great. That's, that's great. Uh, it, and and um, I think they have to hit a million by the end of the year in order to be profitable. They're going to do it. I think with the additional uh, content they've added, they're going to definitely hit it. And I'm hoping that these other sports... The, the other sports need to catch up you know mm -hmm. they're gonna they're gonna see this places like espn are gonna have to see this is where you need to go you need mm -hmm. to have the original content you need to be able to watch things instantly on your tablet and it cuts down on the amount of pirating mm -hmm. which is a big bonus i think for you might as well make some money i don't know when's the last time i've had to look on youtube for a match mm -hmm. <laughs> you know you just you don't you don't bother mm -hmm. with it uh, the, you have to see I, it's funny because the pirating sites where they used to have mm -hmm. the pay-per-views and everything you notice if you look at them now now they have a pirated stream of the wwe network stream mm -hmm. and it's just like it's 10 bucks guys come on mm -hmm. seriously <laughs> you know it killed all that stuff off um but that's incredible uh they, they've playing this up as you know this is a company that basically made pay-per-view in the 80s and now they're saying this is the next thing you know they're really kind of uh pulling ahead in it um, I, I, I have I have said this on Awesome Cast before that the, the the one thing that keeps me from being uh, it, from completely cutting the cord is sports. It yep. is live sports, uh, specifically college football. Um, I, I have more alternatives than than I used to. Uh, the, the Big Ten Network has a has a decent app. Uh, Watch ESPN has a lot of stuff available. 
Um, I'm still curious about uh, Aereo, and, and I hope they actually show up in Pittsburgh by next fall. But I, they're, those, most of those still require uh, some kind of subscription to a, a cable company. Um, so I am not there yet. And, and I know, uh, you know, in, in, in watching uh, the stuff about WrestleMania in my, in my Twitter stream on, on uh, last night or Sunday night, um, I did, just, I'm a little bit envious because I, I wish – I wish I had that. And if I did, uh, I, I would dish the cable company right now. You know, it's almost there. Even that isn't a complete package. Uh, mm-hmm. Raw, Raw and SmackDown are not live. They're the only programs yeah. that are not live, and they don't show yeah. up at least a month after it, it's on. But the pay-per-views, the thing you used to spend $60 a month for is. Uh, so that kind of makes up for it, right? But even mm-hmm. that, if you go and get Hulu Plus, you got the shows. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it, it, as long as you're not worried about watching Raw live on Monday, you're good. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I, I'm down to the point where um, it used to be maybe I snagged something here and there. But uh, honestly, full disclosure, uh, Monday Night Raw is the only thing I steal anymore. Just because I figure that is the only thing that I would have to pay for cable and it's not worth 80 bucks for me. It's not worth the hassle. It's not okay. worth that extra box under there for me. Mm-hmm. But if I put Chromecast, I just send it to the thing. I'm seeing USA's commercials or Sky TVs sometimes, and I figure everybody's happy at that point. So I, I give WWE of my money. So <laughs> I think everybody's happy. I technically, you know, by proxy, I'm paying for Hulu. Uh, you know, it, it, I just figure it all washes out. It all washes out. Hey, if HBO doesn't care about me sharing a password, you know, from my dad's direct TV. No, really? Why, why would the Big Ten Conference give, give, give care if I, if I did that <laughs> once in a while? What's the big deal? What's, what, who, I, you know, I'm okay. seeing the NHL's commercials if I watch a Penguins game anyways, right? Right. 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 Exactly. Right. Exactly. You know, uh, the gray areas. Um, <laughs> awesome. I had one more in here. If you guys have, oh, did you have something to say about that? Okay. Uh, oh, hey, you know, uh, uh, Twitter's going to look like Facebook soon because that's something we need to happen. <laughs> Desperate. This this is desperation on on <laughs> on it? the public company that is Twitter right now. You think? And and, and it, it yeah, I do. So I, let's you know, Facebook, let's let's look like Facebook the other thing that's done. having trouble making money. Uh, but Facebook has done what its investors have wanted it to do. It is it is making money on mobile. It is it has improved incrementally. It's it's mobile club. Um. And I see what what Twitter is doing is a reaction, is a direct reaction to that. Um, we're we are going to make uh, we're going to make Twitter look more like Facebook because you know a, a, a billion plus users can't be wrong, um, even if even if they can. Um, I, I'm I I I I, I want to I want to see what this looks like in person. I've seen mm-hmm. screen caps, and mm-hmm. and uh, I'll be curious to see what happens when it actually uh, gets rolled out. Which that's I think that started I think I read that started today or or this week. Um, but I, I no, that's I, only I really if you use it via the web, this. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, most of us use apps, which I don't know what. Yeah, per- I, use- I, I guess a high percentage probably use uses the. Site. You have to keep in mind that just because we're not doing it doesn't yeah. mean that everybody else isn't doing it. Oh, major, yeah, I completely And agree. the major yeah, complaint with yes. Twitter was people were having trouble finding things that they were specifically looking for. And this is supposed mm. to make it easier. Your most retweeted, most favorited things are supposed to show up bigger, I think, in the feed. Mm. And it's just supposed to be easier to sort things, which probably is a percentage of people it probably appeals to. Mm-hmm. Actually, it, 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 those those things could be helpful. Um, and I and you're right about uh, you know the sample of people. I, most of the people I know, I, I my guess would be never ever ever look at Twitter.com. Um, I I look at it once a week to to do a couple of very specific things, and that's it. I I use apps the rest of the time. Um, but I, I don't know what I, I would be curious to see what a breakdown is of of people who are like me, like us. Uh, he said presumptuously versus people who just who, who use Twitter's interface um, the, because those are the folks who are going to are going to notice difference. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not actually sure if this is going to be a really big deal to me unless it's really, really good. And, and then it honestly, then it probably won't still won't be a big deal to me because I'm still going to use the stuff that I'm used to. <laughs> and, well, maybe- and I'm guessing, too, though, if those if those capabilities um really catch on on the website i'm sure they'll they'll propagate them out to to the, the clients i mean yeah. the, the only reason i say that that 
I, I think there's a large, large, large population of Twitter users that use some type of client is because you have this issue where developers only get so many tokens and then there's only so many people that can connect via a single client and you hear about Twitter clients running out of tokens. Mm -hmm. I, I know there was, a, there was one even in the Microsoft store that had to um, remove itself from the store because they were out of tokens. I think if you want more users and more people leveraging the service, open up the tokens and allow more third-party apps. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, uh, uh, Twitter needs to do what they think they need to do. Uh, I found some stats as of uh, January 1st of this year, just to give you an idea. Uh, total number of active registered users is 60, 645 million. Uh, monthly site visitors is 190. I'm imagining those are unique. Uh, mm -hmm. da, 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 da. Percentage of users who use their phone to tweet is 43%. Uh, and the percent of tweets that come from third party applications is 60%. Mm, there you go. There you go. So, but well, the it, question is, is too, when they say they use their phone, does that mean they're using the old school text message? I don't think a lot of people do it. I really don't think a lot of people. I don't think, a lot of people don't even know that exists. Mad Mike. A lot of people, <laughs> Mad a Mike lot of people is... in other countries. Like that. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mad Mike! Uh, <laughs> We're mocking you on the awesome cast. You just you just cameoed in conversation. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I was surprised at the third party because I thought they bought most of the applications. Um, do they count TweetDeck still, you think? Uh, I'm no, using... I'm thinking TweetDeck doesn't count into that. Yeah, um, I, I'm talking about like your Twitterifics and your Hootsuites. And yeah, I guess they are still out now, there. Some so... of those are grandfathered in token-wise. Yeah. But that's why it's really hard for... I think they, one of the Twitter clients that came out for like the Mac was like 20 bucks mm -hmm. Because they knew they only had so many tokens. So it's not like they could charge $0.99 because they knew they'd run out of those connections. So... I don't know. I understand they want to control the experience, but still, I think there's there's better ways of doing that and controlling the APIs. What, what do you guys use? Do do any of us use? Uh, I use so I I would say once in a blue moon. I mean, very very rarely do I ever go on their website. Hmm. I use their native client for iOS. Mm -hmm. I use Twitterific. For iOS, I use TweetDeck for Mac, and for Windows, I use I can't even remember because I rarely bring it up. I do have their their native um, client, mm -hmm. and now that I have a Windows update today, I can't figure out how to even get to <laughs> the apps on my device. Um, I have Twitter, and there was one other the the native app used to do it for contacts but it doesn't but i was using something that actually would pull together my feed for instagram twitter oh, wow. and facebook into one feed and i don't remember what that is off the top so of you're my head. using everything so i don't think you're uh <laughs> yeah. a case one, study. i'll have one of each please yeah 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 uh I, i'm using but it depends on what device i'm on that's yeah, that's, that's true, true too uh mobile uh and, and this is across i i try to make sure i have parity between my android and my ios devices um, mm -hmm. so it's, uh, Twitter first for casual tweeting. And mm -hmm. I have a couple of the main accounts, like you know, a couple you know, this and mayhem show podcast wise, for instance, uh, Hootsuite on all of those. Um, yeah. so I can do the more heavy, uh, scheduling if I need to. And also I can do the Facebook too, uh, with the scheduling and, and, and rest of my clients and everything else is on there. Of course, uh, mm -hmm. on computer, uh, I do have a uh, tweet deck for the Mac whenever it's it applies uh typically otherwise i'm uh on the web with again tweet deck and uh uh hootsuite so i mean okay. it's it's literally i mean which tweet deck i could just consider at this point the it's default twitter. twitter app because yeah. there's no twitter app anymore yeah. um at least not, i think the mac os one got discontinued right what do you use stutters plume 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 yep, yep. When we hit, when we had uh, the, our our Android phones issued from work, we I I, I settled on Plume. That yeah, was nice. I, I I have a Tweetbot on the phones, um, and I use Hootsuite a lot uh, on desktops slash laptops um, because it's it, it is helpful for work, and I have a, a whole bunch of accounts related to that stuff, and it's easy to schedule. Um, uh, uh, Sprout. Sprout is an interesting thing. Our company bought that and, and bought that for us. And I, I'm, I haven't played with it much personally, but um, 
use that for work as well. It's really, really cool. The the uh, the analytics are are stunning. Actually, it, it's that that's a very nice part of that. Um, oh, that's something that the company bought for us. So wow, I'm looking, at, I'm, I'm looking at that right now. Wow, look at yes. this. So this yes. it, does this do like is does this do like a lot of the scheduling and stuff for you too? Yeah. It does. It does. Is this, um, uh, is this something I might want to replace Hootsuite with? Uh, take a look. I, 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 and, and to be honest, I have no idea what it costs. Um, I, um, again, hold this on. was this was a gift from our, our, our corporate okay. overlords. Um, but it's but it's been very cool to use. Oh, everybody it, say it is, this is scary because it doesn't give me a price. Oh, wait, there uh -huh. it is. Oh, only sixty dollars per user per month. I think I'll stick with my six dollar Hootsuite account. <laughs> 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 That's a little too rich for my blood. Uh, wow. So wow! So you guys, you you're you guys are taking a pretty big play into this. It's nice, um, and and we're I, I would actually uh, like to have because there, there are a couple accounts we can't track because we're limited because there's uh, six daily newspapers and a couple of weeklies and three TV. Now the TV stations don't use this. I don't think um, they they don't use Sprout. They do. They, they got them something else, but. Um, hmm. So the, the company bought this one package for all the properties. So we're, we can't have, we're, we're a little bit limited to the accounts that we can use, but uh, the, the, the analytic stuff is really nice. Uh, very, very simple interface, very easy to set up, uh, in fact, set up searches that are relevant. Um, I, I'm not sure that there's anything here that you can't do on Hootsuite. Um, but this is no, this is what no. the company chose, and it's been a, a, a fun tool. So it's far. a nice, it's a package. That's the thing. I mean, I, sure. I think anybody can do all of this stuff if they know mm -hmm. where to uh some all is one that i've signed up for that i get mm -hmm. the updates and, and 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 they're really specialized in if i'm specifically doing something to sell a product i can track in that together yeah. so i'm kind of losing like part of the connection to that like i could kind of link it through and try to track do i get people to check out the site listen to the shows but sure. i just haven't really put that together yet but again mm -hmm. like getting that or even put a cloud in there or, or, or something like that um uh, yeah the, the tools are all out there I, also i've been looking probably along the same lines and this is more twitter based uh, they may have some other stuff too um and i want to make sure i have the url right uh, i listened to this week in google and mm -hmm. uh junior trapani used to be the person that uh, made actually put together life hacker um mm -hmm. think up is the thing that was put out and uh there, hmm. it, it used to be in this open source thing as they were building it you could put it on your server but that seems to have gone away or else i can't figure okay. out how to get it to put it back on a server but now they have a hosted version that mm -hmm. you can sign up for um it actually did do to facebook and, and twitter on here um and i imagine they're going to add other things too i think the oh, some kind of part of the white house used this like it was part of a joint program there as they were building it mm -hmm. um but it just launched uh, they kind of had a kickstarter-esque thing but now they actually just opened it up to new members that you can go sign up and i think it's it might be like 20 bucks it's actually it's actually 60 dollars a year or five dollars a month so which isn't bad especially compared to what we no, just saw at all. on your thing um so i mean that's that's not bad if you're looking for analytics and trying to figure out how your social media is doing um and, and there's like there's it's a little fun because there's a lot of uh uh hey you talk about yourself a lot you yeah. know kind of <laughs> analytics and stuff like that or or you know how many how many people are sharing your stuff or how much do you share other people's stuff like yeah. more actual social cues get uh -huh. revealed through what they're doing so, um, but yeah, it's thinkup.com if you want to check that out. I, 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 again, I played with like the, the self-hosted version, like early, early on. Um, mm -hmm. and it was, it was pretty good. And, and I keep hearing about little things they're adding and, and, and I think I'm going to jump into it pretty soon. Actually five accounts is $120 a year. So ooh, oh. that's per social network that gets okay. a little expensive, <laughs> yeah, but if you want to know how you're doing on Twitter, that's not so bad, but if you have multiple clients, oh so you gotta do something with that uh guys it's been the awesome guys it's been fun it's been i'm glad we brought, found a lot of happy stories to dissuade us from uh windows xp uh uh uh, uh death day here uh all the balloons are these balloons are, are are there's like a static electric electric vortex happening back here because i actually can't typically put the balloons on top it's just yeah Stick them on the stoke money monkey and leave them there. <laughs> Don't put yeah. them all in his mouth. <laughs>
Um, nom, nom, nom. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have all this by the uh, by all the electronics. <laughs> Whoops. I mean, something very bad is going to happen before the night. This is a fun experiment. This is going to be a fun experiment. Uh, we'll see if I make it through the night on podcast day this week. Uh, you can check in and see if I'm here next week, uh, next Tuesday at, uh, at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time at uh, live.sorgatronmedia.com or just go to awesome do- awesomecast.com or anything like that. And uh, you can jump in on the stream with us, join us in the chat room, just like uh, Crazy Krause, Chachi, a whole bunch of other people have been tonight um, and professing their love for Windows. Uh, and you can also find us. <laughs> we're on Twitter at AwesomeCast, Facebook, Google+. Plus. Leave comments, anything like that. Any stories you think we should be into, uh, drop us a line to AwesomeCast at SorgatronMedia.com. We're on iTunes, Roku, Blip TV, YouTube, Spreakers, all kinds of stuff. And, of course, thanks, big thanks to Michael Allen at Mike Allen PR. That's A-L-L-E-N. Somebody asked me after the show one week uh, for help with the notes and the tweets all night long, letting people know what we're doing in here um, and uh, help us with the show titles and everything like that. Definitely helps out a ton. We need to we need to send him a pizza. He's, he's, he's out there. Does I mean, he have a 3D called? printer? Does he have a 3D printer? We need, to, fa- print. we need to fax him a pizza. We'll fax him a pizza. That'll be <laughs> yes. so much fun. Yes. <laughs> we definitely do because he does a lot of good work for us and we need to... Uh, it's just like oh, Christmas. Everybody's getting sliced gift certificates. Yes. <laughs> it's great. Uh, thanks for that. And thanks for everybody. On list. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thanks, uh, uh, Uncle Crappy. Uh, TimesOnline.com. Uh, tell me your Twitter because I don't have it right in front of me. I want to give you your official one. Uh, we're, we're Twitter is BCT Mike Pound. Uh, the other Twitter is UncleCrappy.com. You can find my tech columns at TimesOnline.com every Sunday morning. And I would be honored. If you would uh, take a look at the uh, beer show that I do every other week, you can find that at timesonline.com slash beer guy. He's a trustworthy beer guy. I try. He is. Um. He is. <laughs> and Shilla at Shilla on the Twitters if you want to talk to him. Um, oh, hey, is there anything coming up? There is some stuff coming up. Uh, I think Apple actually just closed their lottery for, and they've announced the the winners "Quote unquote winners of their their worldwide developer conference lottery. Um, everyone has until I think the 14th to actually purchase their tickets if they won. Um, those tickets go extremely expensive if they're resold. Um, Google actually delayed their I/O registration today until next I think what, Tuesday is that the fifth? Whenever the 15th is, yeah, next Tuesday. Um, so they're also doing a lottery this year. It's not first come first serve." Um, and that's all that I know of that's coming up. Awesome. Obviously, everyone everyone got tons of patches today as, as we talked about <laughs> XP closing down and Windows 8 getting 8.1 up deep. Yeah, I need to make, uh, make sure I turn on all the computers well before we broadcast because every computer has either Google Drive downloads or updates or whatnot. And so, yeah, it gets pretty ridiculous with it kick them all on for the first time in a week um and then you know i never realized that we do the show on patch tuesday every week (laughs) or not every month i guess so yeah that that explains a little bit like yeah dutters is at k dutters on twitters on the twitters we have um tech cocktail coming up oh god i gotta get tickets for that (laughs) yes oh good yes we have tech cocktail coming up on the 17th i think it's the 17th yeah yeah the 17th where's that did they pick it yet i don't know i'm looking i'm sorry tech cocktail i cannot figure out where you are looking go look up uh tech.co and then cavo what cavo cavo c-a-v-o cavo excellent go check that out yes well there'll be some appearances by people like us tedx grand avenue well if we get tickets uh well i'll be there (laughs) tedx grand ave something i didn't get tickets in time for will actually be live streaming here um at the end of the month last Saturday of the month i believe you can check them out just you know do a search for tedx grand ave and uh you can check that out some good names looks like they're going to be popping up there thank you to our awesome chat room you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week except for windows xp